Well, blessings, blessings, everyone. Good afternoon. Welcome, welcome to Midday with Lejean and Bawara. We're excited to be back with you guys. Blessings to you. We had an amazing, amazing time on yesterday. And so we're back for day two. God bless you. Welcome, welcome as you come on. Please, please share the broadcast. Um, many of you shared yesterday. We certainly appreciate it. We have got some amazing, amazing feedback from our broadcast about being bewitched. Um, who, um, knowing that um, the, 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 the enemy was certainly desire um, to get you out of place, get you out of purpose. And so he will sometimes send a bewitching spirit to you. So again, welcome, welcome to today's broadcast. Um, we are so, so happy to have you guys. Blessings to you. And uh, God is so amazing. Tonight, just a couple of announcements before we get started. Um, tonight, I will be starting the Fearless Mentorship. It's going to be amazing, amazing. We've got a group of beautiful, beautiful, fearless women that are um, have signed up. And so we're excited. And um, if you're still interested, you can certainly, certainly take part in that. Just go to our website and register um, for that next week, um, Friday and Saturday. We will be in Houston, Texas, um, being a part of the um, Prayer, Praise, and Pursuit Conference with our dear, dear sister, Marina Coriat there in Houston, Texas. So um, more of that information, certainly you can um, get more of that information probably through our Facebook pages um, as we've been posting about that. So you are close to the area, please um, come in and join us. I know Apostle Travis Jennings is going to be a part of that, Enrique Holmes, um, of course, my husband and myself, um, Prophetess Kathy Summers Kelly will be there as well. And um, so a, couple, a few other people. Um, and so I'm sure it's going to be an amazing time many people are excited about it so um, certainly excited again um, about that and about you guys being here so um, please please share the broadcast let others know that we're on and we are going to get started on our subject today yes we are <laughs> <laughs> so uh, excited about what God is doing you know we really got a lot of feedback one of our uh, pastor friends actually said that they canceled their service and uh, had a teaching on this whole process. And uh, so I thought it was really good. What I did was I want to go back and uh, I want to I want to cover for those of you that are watching. You can see behind us bewitched, discerning the voice of destiny, destroying spirits. And let me tell you where a lot of our subjects come from. A lot of our subjects come from the fact that uh, somewhere along the line. We have ex we were teaching on something, and as a result, what happened was is that someone uh, shared with us an issue or a situation or a circumstance that uh, that they were dealing with, and as a result, it helped us to dig deeper into, into something else. Right. For instance, we were doing uh, these. We've been on this subject, or where is it that sudden breakthrough? And one of the areas that we found that stops people from getting their breakthrough. This is our new book released on the sixteenth. And uh, tremendous, tremendous resource, I believe, for the body of Christ. It's in Barnes & Noble's Books A Million, um, book, Barnes & Noble's Books A Million, Amazon. Yes. Uh, it's also in ChristianBooks.com. Uh, Christian mm -hmm. So you can pretty much get it anywhere books are sold. And on our website as well. And our website. So the website gives you a signed copy of it. But at any rate, so I begin to look at that, and I begin to ask the question of what is it or what goes on uh, that stops people from receiving their breakthrough. Mm -hmm. And when we begin to look at that and think about that, uh, I, I begin to look at how the enemy, if he knows that you're on, in route or on the path to a breakthrough, what he would do is he will send uh, assassins. And we talked about this last week right. in our spiritual warfare training. He will send assassins to try to get you out of place and get you out of position uh, of destiny. And as a result, then what happens is, is that you end up missing the destiny and missing the breakthrough where you were in route to get your breakthrough and he sends an ambush. Right. He sends, uh, he sends a, an, an assassin. Mm -hmm. He sends a sniper attack against you to try to stop you from being able to receive what God has for you. Yes. And so as a result, what we we began to look at was, okay, God, how does the enemy do that? And one of the things that we said that he does is he bewitches people. Are you listening to me? Mm -hmm. And so I want to, I want to give you some definition behind that thought of being bewitched. 
Uh, thank you for those that are sharing. And then we actually uh, are prepared because this subject was so uh, was so uh, strong for us. And I've never done that before where I started to call uh, different friends of ours and, and, and um, spiritual family members to ask them to help to help us to articulate this point and the seriousness. We'll have uh, Apostle Alexander Pagani, Tuesday, Sophia Ruffin, Wednesday is Apostle Ivory Hopkins, and again, Thursday is uh, Apostle Andrew Town. What I've brought, I've tried to bring to the table, I've got a few more people that I'm waiting on responses from, but I brought them to the table because I believe that they can help us to identify and help believers to be free mm -hmm. from spirits that would attempt to, or attempt to bewitch them, and eventually, with the with the uh, the ultimate goal of, of, de of destroying destiny, right. getting you out of place of purpose, getting you out of the place of, of destiny. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to do first is I want to take a moment and I want to define this word. Now in Galatians chapter three, verse one, uh, there is a scripture where the apostle Paul is talking to the Galatian churches. And uh, those of you, of course, who heard, who heard started to yesterday, uh, it, it asked, Paul asked the Galatian churches, who has bewitched you? And so then what I did was I went, of course, to my lexicon and uh, concordance and lexicon. And in the lexicon, it is the, it is the Greek word baskano. And so this word baskano is a Greek word. The Greek word bewitched is, is, is or the, the Greek word baskano is the English word that we use, which is bewitched. Only used three times in uh, in the in the New Testament. Only three times, and each time it refers to someone who has exerted some kind of poison or mind control over someone to get them to think or to do a thing a certain way. Now check this out. Let's get to the root of it because I think it's important that we get to the root of the understanding of why this spirit exists and operates in the body of Christ. And then my wife, because my wife was a nurse for twenty uh, four years, I want her to talk about uh, what poison does to the natural body and what, what what venom and poison does and and how it affects our natural body and then we're going to look at how it affects the 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 uh the spiritual body and both the individual person and the body of christ right. okay so let's look at this biscano it is a greek word which means to exert an evil influence through the eye or bewitch as with the evil eye and then it goes on down uh the another one is to be resentful of someone in of something enjoyed by another or envy and so we find that the essence of much of what we see with this word biscano or to bewitch is is the root of envy or jealousy or even uh even covetousness you can literally covet uh the joy that somebody else has and as a result begin to operate as a witch okay you you can begin to operate in witchcraft because your goal is to enjoy the same level of of uh, of pleasure or enjoyment that somebody else is right. you can see someone uh and so I want to I, I'm going to I'm going to go to the scripture. Let's look uh, very quickly because we remember yesterday. Just a quick uh, recap of what we talked about yesterday. When we look at Paul's trip to the Galatian churches, it was his first missionary trip. Uh, and the Galatian churches, it was not just one church. It was a letter that was sent and it was read to all four churches for four, uh, the, the four cities and churches that were in those four cities in a place called Asia Minor, which is modern day uh, Turkey. And so when we look at the text. Next, uh, of Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1, he's speaking to these people, Iconium, Lystra, Derby, and Pisidian Antioch. Those are what th those four cities. Right. And so as a result, it was necessary then for us to go to Acts chapter 13, where Paul actually takes this trip. Now, it, now interesting, Paul is writing the, the, the letter to the Galatian churches after his trip and sometime after. So check it out. But he, here's the interesting part. Uh, we saw on yesterday, we talked about Acts chapter 13. Of course, this is where they're at Antioch, Barnabas and, and, and Simon, that's 13 and 1, called Niger and Lucius of Cyrene and Menane, which brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work I've called them thereunto. They laid, laid hands on them. They sent them out. They, they first go through the island of Cyprus. And so they go through Paphos and Salama, Cyprus, and then they take a boat to Perga or Pamphylia. And so they're going north. They get there. I think it's about an 80 mile walk from the coastline to the actual city. And so they go to these four, first four cities. In these cities, of course, uh, they were predominantly a Jewish community. And so it goes on to say, let's matter of fact, let's look at Acts chapter 13. Um, 
in verse 42, and I'll read 42 through 45, and it said, when the Jews were going out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace. Listen, verse 44, and the next Sabbath came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. What, to, was filled with what? Envy. envy. And so, and, and spake against those things which were spoken of by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. And so whenever the bewitching spirit comes, it comes because of envy. It came because they saw the magnitude of the influence that Paul and Barnabas had mm -hmm. as they came into that environment and that region and people began to be drawn unto them. And as a result, people, be, they began to bewitch, to find a way to bewitch the people to get the people out of place. Now I want to go to what you have as far as what poison does, then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you other biblical uh, instances where this spirit is operating. Please share this with somebody because you may know somebody uh, who is either in your church, in your family, in certain areas of life who is, who is, who is, who their envy and their jealousy of somebody else's uh, excitement or place in life is literally causing them to bewitch somebody. Are you listening? We want people to be free from and be able to discern the voice of destiny destroying spirit. There is a difference between the voice that comes to tell you that maybe something isn't good for you and there is a difference between that voice and the voice which is really jealous or envious of a relationship that you have with somebody, whether it's in your church, whether it's in your marriage, whether it's in your family, whether it's in your business. I even got a phone call yesterday from a friend of mine who is a major business and governmental fi uh, figure who is actually was listening to our broadcast and he said to me that that doesn't just happen in the church my friend he said it happens in business as well mm -hmm. he said in politics and in government he said the spirit of bewitchment is very very strong in politics and in government yes. and I'm sure that in every area mm -hmm. that it is that it is it, it it's 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 evident now again right. please share and I want you to hear what my wife has to say again she was a nurse for 24 years and I want her to talk to you about how uh, how it is that people can actually be bewitched by something that somebody says and how that poison penetrates and operates with us. You know, there are different, of course, types of venom um, according to the different reptiles, snakes or whatever that um, it is, um, has these certain venoms, but the hemotoxic venom is designed to assault the cardiovascular system. Um, cytotoxic venom targets specific sites of muscle groups while neurotoxic venom goes after the brain and nervous system. And so what, what happens is a person becomes weak. The person, uh, really their body really begins to start shutting down. They become, they, they become, sometimes you can even become blind. Um, or deaf or mm. so your, your senses really begin to be affected and what happens is if it's not if there's no intervention if there's not an anti-venom immediately then the person will die it, and it will come very quickly um, and so we, we understand it so then the um, uh, hemotoxic venom will cause the bite victim to experience decreased blood pressure and blood clotting so their their blood begins to clot and so when their blood clots if the venom reaches the heart before receiving treatment this is a big problem and usually results in death so it begins to um, affect the heart if there's no intervention um, that takes place so then we have the cytotoxic venom it kills the human tissue as if any tissue dies then it would have to be amputated so the goal of neurotoxic venom is to disrupt the function of the brain and the nervous system. This kind of venom can lead to paralysis and an inability to control one's muscles. So it's it's one of the things that a snake does or, uh, or, or some type of reptile that has this particular type of venom. They want to stop the movement of the, of, of the thing that they've targeted. They want to stop your movement. And so once they release that venom, they already know that in just a few seconds and they don't they don't even they, they don't try to fight you no they stay right there because they know within a short period of time that you're going to begin to be to get weak you're going to be begin to not be able to move forward you're going to stay right there where, where, where they bit you at and so one of the things I begin to look at I begin to look at um you know the effects of um 
of, of, of venom, you know, even in the spirit and with envy, with strife, with even with bitterness, um, we, we have to understand that it's like, it's like a toxin, which is, which is deadly to a person's nervous system. As I said, the venom of a human victim results in severe pain. It results in blurred vision and eventually paralysis. Mm. So many times the person who's, who has bitterness or envy desires others, especially those who hurt them to experience pain in their life. Additionally, the person ceases to have clarity and vision in their spiritual walk. It doesn't matter how much they've been exposed to the word of God. Their hardened heart prevents the word from ever taking root um, in their life. And so also um, envy and bitters is also pro it progresses doing its work inside a person's heart and it causes spiritual paralysis. So when, 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 when you release that, when that is released, when you when you've been bewitched, it begins to enter into your heart, and it causes your heart, glory to God, it causes your heart to begin to 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 not to to not function properly. And we know the heart is out of is is where our emotions are. It's out of the heart flows the issues of life. And so, if you find a person that all of a sudden is you know they they're you know they're they're indifferent, they don't want to do anything. It seems like they're they're blind to certain things. It's like my God, what is really going on with you? Can't you really see? But because they have been bit and, and the poison has been released inside of them, then they, they've been paralyzed. Their eyesight has, has grown dim and sometimes they can even go blind. Their heart has been affected. And so when their heart has been affected, then they're, they're not able to really understand or e even really see or accept the truth because they believe the poison of the lie. Wow. So, 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 so make sure let's, let's bring this clear again. So the, the three or four things that they affect, they affect the mind and the clarity of the mind's thinking. Right. They affect the mobility of the person. So right. it produces a paralysis yes. in their, their ability to move forward and yes. really, really be able to even, even operate as they normally would. Yes. And then it can affect their vision, their eyesight. Yes. And the probably heart. even, even the heart. Right. And the blood. And the yes. blood and the respiratory system. Absolutely. And it so is. their breathing is affected. Their breath is affected, which yes. means their spirit is affected because mm -hmm. the breath is symbolic of the spirit and so the spirit is affected the heart is affected the blood is affected uh the mind is affected all of these things are affected by being bit by the wrong venom absolutely and then what happens when a person is infected spiritually they stop praying they stop reading their word they stop fellowshipping with other believers wow isn't that amazing so so this this subject and thought process of being bewitched is so much deeper than we think. We think yes. that Paul was just talking to the Galatian churches, but no, this is something that's happened throughout the Bible. Yes. When we look at the text of scripture, we can see it. So let's look, let's, oh, go ahead, go ahead. One of the other things that and we had shared earlier is that sometimes a person can say something to someone and they can say, well, you know, someone did this or someone did that and they can be okay and they can just walk away from it. But if that person already has a wound, it's more susceptible. It's more, they're more susceptible to being infected. Wow. So, okay, so break that down in the case. So sometimes they are, that, that toxin is looking for an open wound. Absolutely. And Absolutely. especially as it pertains to, to bewitchment. Yes. Because people that are looking to bewitch other people are looking for people who already have an open wound. Right. Such was the case even with what we talked about. Uh, yesterday, uh, when we dealt with uh, even, uh, who was it? Uh, I think it was Absalom. Mm -hmm. Absalom went throughout the city. 2 Samuel, I think it's 15. He went throughout the city and he found people who uh, who had a, a a case where they felt as if though maybe they needed justice. Mm -hmm. And so his, his intent there was to grab those people and pull them to the side and tell them, if I were made king or if I were made a judge, I would, I would help you. So right. they already have a wounded spirit. Right. So what we have to do is, and this is, let, let me speak, let me speak to pastors. Let me speak to leaders for a moment. You have to identify people who already have wounded spirits or who have a propensity or a, uh, 
and, 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 and I mean, if now you, you're a nurse, but you could even probably talk to me about, uh, even as it pertains to people's health, people who already have a predisposition. Predisp yeah, uh, maybe an already weakened immune system. Okay. They may have something going on, you know, within their system, with their blood, with their vital organs. They may already have an issue going on in their respiratory system. And so they're already compromised. Wow. So they're already compromised. And so then what happens is if something else attacks them, it completely wipes them out mm. as opposed to someone healthy. Wow. So, so, that could even be, so that could be babies yes, and people who have a predisposition yes. in their family right. to those issues or Absolutely. who have a preconditioning health condition. Right. Makes it even worse for them. Absolutely. Which means that if, if you if you are strong and in good health, yes. you have a greater fighting chance. Absolutely. And if you get the antidote quick enough right. and get healed and delivered from it quick enough, you may have a chance to live. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. So you look at it spiritually, those that are spiritually minded as opposed to those that are carnal. Mm -hmm. Because those that are carnal are weak in spirit. They're wow. weak spiritually. So when things come to them, they don't have they, they don't have the, the, the immune, the spiritual immune system to reject it. Because mm -hmm. people that are strong are automatically reject it. But people who yes. are already wounded, okay, yes. let's take it a little further. <laughs> people that are already offended by something right. will oftentimes be more susceptible to the gossip or to the drama or to the confusion or to the bewitchment. Yes. And they're even susceptible to somebody coming to their ear to say something. Right. Whereas if they weren't wounded, yes. they would automatically say, listen, I am not a human garbage can. You can't tell me that. Right. I don't want to hear that. Yes. Take it to the person. Right. But when they're already wounded and susceptible, yes. they are more than likely open to be able to receive what that person has to say. Absolutely. It's just like you were saying on yesterday, whenever there is a predator, whenever there is a predator um, in the wild, whether it's a lion, whether it's, you know, a tiger or whatever. And, and so there is a herd, there's a group of animals that they're, they're casing out. And they will look for the one that is most weak. They will look for the youngest. They will look for the one that's by itself. Mm. And so they begin to target that particular one. Out of all the others, they target that one because it's not connected fully to the herd. Then, or it's it's compromised in some way. Maybe there is a limp. Um, maybe they, they, they see that they've been hurt. Mm, somebody it's, said something. This is good. Someone meaning to bewitch me came to me at a time of grief. Yes. That's another major time. Absolutely. When people can be bewitched yes. is when people are grieving. Yes. And when and, and listen, I watched this. I watched it. This is why I say you have to be particularly uh, um, careful, even as leaders of the people that are around you, because when you when you when you're grieving, when you're going through a tough period, uh, and you don't even have to be a leader. I, I, I just have a particular affinity towards leaders because right. I am a leader. Sure. But but you when you're grieving, you have to be careful who you let inside your circle. This is why. Listen to me. This is very interesting. This is why when a soldier is wounded on a battlefield in the military they immediately remove they immediately assess that soldier's uh you, you know his situation her situation to find out the extent of the damage and then remove them to a place where they can add to an infirmary where they have the ability to deal with the infirmity that they're dealing with are you listening to me mm -hmm. and so they and they will not let them back on the battlefield until they're clear Right. And some of them never return to the battlefield. Why? Because they've been wounded and they're not in a position to adequately defend themselves against the attack of another, uh, uh, potentially of another threat. Right. And so we have to even in, in our organizations, in our ministries, in our business, in our environments, we have to watch and we have to see when people have been wounded, when yes. people have been offended, when people yes. have been affected by things. Because let me tell you what happens. This is the same thing when you look at, matter of fact, when I go back and I look at David's situation uh, with Absalom. Absalom did that because he was offended because he did not like the way that David handled the situation with his sister and the situation with Amnon. And so as a result, he took it upon himself to literally destroy his brother because he didn't like the way his, his father handled the situation. And then he was upset with his father. And as a result, he began to try to bewitch the people, pull the people off to himself. And it literally caused David to have to walk across the bridge and leave the kingdom when God had already said that he was the king. But 
But again, the only thing that can happen to an Absalom, the only thing that can happen to a Jezebel, the only thing that can happen to people who are bewitching other people eventually is death. You know, absolutely. And what happens even in that situation, then um, the person becomes so insensitive. It, it really replaces the presence of God with hate, with bitterness, with strife, with envy. It begins to replace it with the presence of God. And so once the presence of God is no longer there, they're no longer convicted. Mm. They, 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 they're, they're, they're no longer convicted. And so they just go on this rampage. They, they try to hurt as many people as possible. They try to wound as many people as wow. possible. Possible. They try to get as many people out of place as possible. Glory to God because of their own bitterness, their own envy, their own um, resentment. And so it is It is important that we begin to see. And that's why we've got to raise up intercessors. We've got to raise up Shamar prophets. And deliverance, got, workers. and deliverance workers. You've got to get in position. You've got to get there because you've got to be so sensitive in the spirit. Your eyes have to be sensitive. Your ears have to be so sensitive in the spirit, not according to to what your what your natural senses or what you can hear and see no you got to be able to see in the spirit you got to be able to discern some things and so um and to that's under, before it happens before it you happens got, you, you got to be keen because the prophet or the intercessor who only deals with and addresses things after it happens right you've already failed yes. and, I'm, I'm, and i don't want to put people i don't want to you know the word fail is a strong word but in reality it is yes it's like in the military we talked about this again during, uh, during our spiritual warfare training but we talked about how intercessors and prophets are our early uh, warning systems. Mm -hmm. Every nation and every military unit has early warning systems. And so uh, an early warning system is used to detect when the enemy is attacking prior to the enemy attacking. Mm -hmm. if, the, if the missiles and the bombs are able to attack us and, and, and they hit us, then we you weren't an early detection system. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important for believers who are prophets and intercessors to be prayed. But you, let, let me say this. One of the areas that the that, that the that that toxic and that bewitching spirit attempts to look at what Jezebel did. She always comes after the prophets. She's always going to come after the intercessors. She wants to be tied yes. to the money. She yes. wants to be. She wants to infiltrate these areas Absolutely. so that then she can cripple the whole organization. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so that that spirit begins to target people in those specific key areas, and they look for the weakest one. They look for one that they can influence, or they've already had an influence over, mm -hmm. or relationship with mm -hmm. and so you you realize and then what happens is then the person or people begin to have more an affinity towards the, the 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 you know the one that is doing the bewitching they don't even let leadership know they don't even tell them what's going on it's all hush hush and by the time the leader finds out it's it's a whole full-blown catastrophic massacre let me be transparent. Uh, I've been, we've been, we've been leading uh, organizations both in the military. I've, we've led organizations in the military, led them in the in the uh, in the government sector, uh, other areas. And what I found is is that uh, there is this there is this unwritten rule. Now I'm getting ready to help. I'm getting ready to help a pastor out here somewhere uh, because I I didn't understand this, and I'm treading very very uh, very very touchy ground. But at the same time, I think it's necessary because I want to help somebody. And so one, there was a scenario where somebody comes in and they bewitch somebody. And so the person comes in and they say, uh, listen, this is going on, that's going on, this is going on. The person sits and they quietly listen to the person. The, the, the voice of the person who is bewitching them is going into their ear gate, going into their spirit. They're taking in the toxin, they're receiving it, and then it's they don't realize it, but it's literally going throughout their entire body. Then let me tell you what happens. Then this person, because, oh God, this is gonna really be good, they now have been infected by the infection that the person has and they have a connection with them. Now, when when you should have alerted the authorities that this, that this thing is going on, what happens is now they feel a, a need to protect the person who infected them. Who protects a person that infects them unless the person is, is infected? Right. You follow right. what I'm saying? Right. And so the person that, that really infected, they're waiting. They're waiting to see how they're going to respond. Right. They're waiting to see how, how you know, if, if they're going to remain connected. They're waiting to see because they've been so calculated. Mm -hmm. it, it has been so intentional. It, it's been intentional because with snakes, they bite you intentionally. 
Oh, it's the intent to kill you. To, to, to kill you. Because it, not, and not and a lot of it because it's their defense mechanism. Right. The snake doesn't do it because it's necessarily a predator. Most times when people yes. walks up on a snake and gets bit by the snake, it's because the snake felt that it was defending itself because it felt that it was vulnerable, and that was the only way to be able to uh, to to, uh, to be able to deal with it. Right. Are you listening to Absolutely. me? Absolutely. That, 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 that's amazing. Yes. Then now now again going back to my thought. So now the person, ha but the only way to cure the the infection and stop it from spreading and becoming an epidemic is to know where it where it started from. Right. But oftentimes, especially when you're dealing with bewitchment, people don't have a tendency to want to tell who the person was that that, that, that actually started the infection. Mm -hmm. They'll try to cover this person. I've right. seen this happen more times than once. Right. Well, I'm not going to say any names, but you didn't have a problem saying a name when you were talking about the, the, everybody else. Right. But then when it when it comes back to you thinking you're going to be uncovered because you actually had a part in it too, right. now all of a sudden you want to say no names. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. It's all right. But uh, but go ahead and finish that part. And then I want to I wanna cover something uh, that I read in another book. And I'm going to give you more scripture for this and show you more cases and more examples. I'm enjoying teaching this today, and uh, I'm really excited. They got that cover for that uh, for that book done, bewitched, uh, discerning the voice of destiny, destroying spirits. Let's just spirits. look at some of the um, some of the comments. Yeah, take the head of Jezebel off. Yes, yes. This is so. Just looking at some of the the different comments is just really amazing because you realize that you know how the enemy works and sometimes we don't realize god what is really going on even someone was saying that it happened to them because you know right after they had suffered a loss um in one of their family members and so we god wants us you know to be aware he does not want us to be ignorant concerning satan's devices amen so listen let me give you a couple more uh scriptures for this so acts chapter 13 we talked about this one yesterday but it seemed that everywhere Paul and Barnabas went on that first missionary journey, those people followed them. So remember, we were reading Acts chapter 13, verse number, uh, verse, I say 44 and 45. And the next Sabbath came about the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy. Again, that same word, because the word Bascano uh, is a word which, which literally, listen, which the root word of it is the word envy. And so the root word of, of that noun is, is, is a word which literally means envy. And so in one place, it's bewitching, but the root and the cause of it is because of envy. And so what happens is they saw the influence that Paul and Barnabas were exerting, and they saw the fact that they would not have as much control over them as they once did. And so they, they sought to, with their voice, begin to open their mouth and begin to speak evil and blaspheme Paul and Barnabas. And as a result, it caused a change in the heart. Remember what poison does. It changed the heart. It changed in the mind, a change in the heart, the respiratory system. Come on. Uh, the movement. So now when they were supposed to be moving and, and moving forward in their destiny, all of a sudden they were paralyzed and unable to move and unable to move forward and fulfill the destiny and the purpose. They were free. They were getting free from the religious system of the day. But at the same time, they didn't like what Paul and Barnabas and the freedom and the liberty that they were giving through Jesus Christ and as a result it produced this situation. Yes. I'm going to I'm going to go I'm going to I'm going to go a little further and then I'm going to take you back to the garden because <laughs> I think that's going to bless you too. And again all this stuff will be in the ebook. But anyway, let's go down to verse 15. It says, "But the Jews stirred up the devout and honorable women and the chief men of the city and raised persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them out of the coast." Paul and Barnabas shook the dust off of their foot and uh, and came to Iconium. And so uh and so it's it's interesting how they always want to attend, even from a political assassination perspective, they, they went and found the, the people who had influence to try to get them to come against what Paul and Barnabas were doing. Because again, it's all about envy. I don't like the fact that you have the position and the power and the strength and the anointing that you have. And I don't like the fact that you're taking people from my side and from my faction and you are now taking them to your side. And this happens when you go into even, even apostolically, there was an apostolic journey 
church. And when you apostolically go in, this is, this is good for many of you that are prophets, many of you that are apostles. When you have gone into various regions, even evangelists, you've gone into different regions and you've gone into different places to preach and prophesy and teach the gospel. And there's always been a group of people who've tried to keep you out and keep you out of their borders and their coasts and out of their regions and their towns and their cities. And the reason for it is because they want to keep people and they want to keep the scales upon people's eyes. They want to keep people in bondage. They want to keep people uh, uh, worshiping the same way they've always worshiped. And as a result, when you come in to help break people free, you are always looked at as the enemy. Are you listening Jesus. to me? So uh, let's go on to a few other ones. So then they go on and, uh, and they preach in another city. Uh, matter of fact, let's go down to chapter 14. It says, It came to pass, they came to Iconium, and they went together into the synagogue of the Jews, and so spake that the great multitude of the Jews and also the Greeks believed. Again, people start to change their perspective and their thought, and as a result, all of a sudden, the enemy raises up his head to try to destroy you and stop you from believing what you've been believing. Verse 2, But the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil affected against the brethren. What is that? Their minds were evil affected. Yes. In essence, what they did was they bewitched them. Right. This is why when Paul speaks in Galatians Jesus. 3 and 1 and asked them who had bewitched them, he understood because he had experienced it while he was there. He had yes. seen people be bewitched against yes. them and try to bring them out of that relationship. You've got to ask yourself, when you start to grow, when you start to become who you be started to become, you've got to be listening to the, the voices that you're listening to. You've got to be discerning. You've got to pray in this season for Amen. a greater discernment. Yeah sermon from God than you ever had before in your life because what happens is is the enemy is not happy with your growth he is not growth with, uh, blessed with your progress he is not excited that you receive your sudden breakthrough and as a result he will talk against the very people that brought that brought you breakthrough and helped you get your deliverance this is where the problem comes in yes. because of bewitchment people bringing in poison and toxins that are meant to immobilize you that are meant to immobilize your mind, your yes. heart, come on, your blood, to change your blood condition. Are yes. you listening to me? Your to view try to and your listen. Perception. Yeah, your view and your perception to try to destroy you. And so what you've got to be on the watch out for is that you don't let people bewitch you as it pertains to where God has taken you to, when your freedom is, is in stake, when your destiny is in stake, when your purpose is at stake. You cannot allow people to bewitch you and get you off focus. Let me tell you something. You listen, the spirit of mind control. I was reading. In, I want to I want to look at this because the Bible said that they they made their minds evil affected against the brethren. Yes. And I began to look at this this thing. Spirits uh, mind control. This is in the Deliverance and Spiritual Warfare Manual by Apostle John Eckhart. And I love what he you know what he what he's teaching here. He says spirits of uh, spirits can control the mind and affect the way a person thinks. If an evil spirit can control the thoughts, they can defeat the individual. Mind control is a very important spirit in Satan's arsenal. People can receive mind control spirits through music. Music, rock, jazz, disco, and the like. Meditation, reading certain books, drugs, alcohol, or anything that alters the mind and breaks down the hedges. Passivity, controlled by another person, exposure of the mind to false teaching, psychology, pornography, and so on. Mind control, control spirits can also be inherited. They have tentacles and resemble creatures such as the octopus and the squid. Migraine headaches are called by mind control spirits. Mind control works with insanity, mental illness, schizophrenia, uh, uh, intellectualism, and a host of other, that, uh, of other spirits that operate in the mind. M mind control also gives a person the ability to control the mind of another. Many pastors and church leavers have have very powerful mind control spirits. False teachers and cults also use mind control to keep people bound to them. The spirits hate the anointing of the forehead with oil, and this is helpful in binding them. Also, the anointing the top, back, and sides of the head is sometimes necessary. When a person receives deliverance from mind control, they're able to think clearly, some for the first time in their lives. In attacking mind control, uh, come against the tentacles by asking the Lord to send angels to sever them. And so it is very, listen, let me tell you something. You have got to, and that was again from uh, page 230, the subject of mind control from uh, Apostle John Eckhart's Deliverance and Spiritual Warfare Manual. And so I thought that very important because sometimes you're dealing with uh, squid spirits and other spirits that are literally trying to take you out. Listen to me. I'm telling you that you cannot allow the enemy to be with you. And this thing and this thought is much bigger than we thought it had been. I When I called, when I talked yesterday, uh, and I'm going to give you more scripture. I'm not done with giving you scripture because I want you to get this. Tomorrow, uh, when when uh, we're bringing in Apostle uh, Apostle Apostle, um, 
uh, uh, Jojo Dawson. And then Monday, upon when I when I called these apostles and these uh, these these, I mean, and even Sophia, I was talking about, I was talking with her about it. I was talking to Jojo Dawson on yesterday. I'm talking about in a matter of a couple of hours, God gave me this revelation, and we said we need to call these leaders. And Apostle Jojo said, "Man, I was just teaching on that." He said, "My wife Autumn was just teaching on that." Uh, and then, well, and then when I talked to, uh, as a matter of fact, when I talked to uh, 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 Apostle Pagani, he said the same thing. He said, "Man, listen." He said, "I'm going to talk to them." Oh God, listen. He said, "I'm going to talk to them about spiritual." Oh, can I? My wife looked at me like you better oh, no, can't tell right. about spiritual kidnapping. How the enemy literally has attempted to kidnap your mind. Are you listening mm -hmm. to me? Mm -hmm. That's what bewitchment is. Yes. It's literally holding your mind hostage. Yes. And so he yes. said he's going to talk about that on Monday, and then on Tuesday, Sophia Ruffin is going to talk about it. Come on, and then Wednesday, the general uh, apostle Ivory Hopkins is going to help us deal with it, and then on Thursday, uh, my friend Apostle Andrew Tao. These are all uh, apostolic and prophetic leaders mm -hmm. from different uh, from different ethnic groups, from different uh, from yes. different uh, camps that are going to deal with this subject of bewitchment. Because I'm telling you that the enemy wants to bewitch you and literally destroy you. Jesus, Jesus. You know it's so amazing because the the real enemy, when he begins to release the poison into your system. And it begins to take control of your mind and take control of your heart. Then your perception is off. And then you begin to look at those that God has positioned to take you to where you need to be, to impart into you, to, to develop you. Then that poison causes you then to, to look at them as the enemy. Right. But you know, that's exactly what happened. Absolutely. Look at the scenario. This is exactly what Paul and Barnabas went through. They began to look at them as the enemy. And so it, it raised up that enemy. Mm -hmm. And then verse uh, in Acts chapter 14, verse uh, 18 and 19. And it's so in verse 19, it says, and there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium. Listen, them devils actually followed them. Are you listening <laughs> to me? Those guys actually followed them and, and they followed them to the next city. And the Bible said, who personally Persecuted the people and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. And so it's very important that we that we that we be careful and we be cautious with this whole process because what'll happen is this enemy's intent is to destroy you. Right. This enemy's intent is to get you off focus and get you out of purpose, get you out of destiny. And let me say this: this spirit goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Yes. The yes. spirit goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. It's 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 a spirit. Listen. When I look back, let me go to Genesis 3. Go, uh, keep talking while I go to Genesis you know, 3. It's just so amazing. This um, woman of God has been been commenting from Europe and just saying how she's dealt with it. She and her husband has dealt with it. And it, that's how it was. It followed them from city to city. And so now they don't necessarily always follow you from city to city. They call you. They inbox you. You know, oh, yeah. so they're trying whatever means to try to get, get, you know, to release that poison, you know, so that you're not able to move forward and not able able to progress because that's that's the whole thing um, of the enemy he doesn't want you to progress he really the devil really wants to kill you he wants to kill your momentum he wants to kill your ministry your marriage he wants to kill your influence so that other people would not receive the benefit of what you have to offer that's it listen uh you know, I, I'm looking at this thing. Somebody asked, where would the speakers be? Uh, it's going to be on Facebook because there's no way we can on, do it on our broadcast on here, our broadcast here at 1 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, because it, it won't be, we can't do it on, on Periscope, unfortunately. Because, okay. But we'll be able to broadcast from Periscope and you'll be able to listen. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so, but then, uh, let me look at this. Uh, when, 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 now I see, again, it's a, envy is the essence of the, of the whole process. So when we look at Adam's relationship to God... It was a relationship where they talked. It was a relationship where they were connected. Do you remember that Lucifer was cast out of heaven? And so he did not have relationship with God any longer. He did not have the ability. And so Lucifer, he he literally, and when we talk about the serpent was more subtle, uh, was it Genesis chapter 3 and 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, you shall not eat, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. 
For God does know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and tree and desired to one make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband and he did check something very quickly and I'm going to continue moving. You know, absolutely. Just being aware, um, we have to get into a place that we're not so easily influenced by outside, um, you know, influencers. What is the purpose? What is the purpose of them telling you something? What is the purpose of them trying to get you out of place? If you're you're on a you're on a trajectory of where God is taking you. What is the purpose? There, there's got to be more than what they're trying to say to you. And, and so you, it, it is important that you understand, um, you know, that your life is at stake. Your, your, your home is at stake. Your marriage, your ministry, your family is at stake. You know, and it is dependent on, upon you being who God's called you to be, doing what God has called you to do and not and allowing. Being in place. And being in place. Being in place. Because again, once you are out of place, they have nothing for you. They have nowhere to take you. They can't encourage you. They can't pray for you. They can't impart it to you because they have nothing for themselves. Think about this. Once the serpent got them to disobey God, dishonor God, they got them displaced, got them, got them out of the place of, of the position promise. of power and out of the place of promise, you don't even hear about him anymore. Yes. He, he moves out of the way. Right. Listen, though. Listen to me. I want to I want to show you something else. He, he literally got them messed up. Then I begin to look at something else because the enemy, this is what the enemy does, man. This thing, listen, this thing is blessing me. You think it's blessing you, but I'm telling you it's blessing me. I'm looking at, at chapter four of the book of Genesis because this thing, not only it didn't stop with them, it trickled down to their children. Are you listening to me? And so the enemy not only wants to destroy you with the spirit of envy and jealousy, but he wants to infect your entire family line so that he that he literally causes you as much grief, causes you as much pain, causes you as, to miss the promise and the destiny of God for your life. And so he was jealous of Adam's relationship with God. And right. as a result, he envied the relationship where they while he walked with God in the cool of the day. The, the enemy, it, he is envious of your relationship with God. And he'll literally send assassins to get you out of place. Right. And he'll send the, and they'll use their voice to talk you out of the position of the relationship where you have with God. The relationship you have with your church. The relationship you have with your wife. The relationship you have with your parents. The relationship that you have in government, in business in other places. This is what the essence of politics was all about. Yes. It's espionage. It, it, it's it geared to get one person out of place so that they don't have the influence that they once had. Jesus. Let me give you another one. And, the, and Adam knew Eve and his wife and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel and Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord and Abel he brought of the firstling of the flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was wroth and his countenance failed. And the Lord said, and why thou wroth and why thou countenance failed? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire and thou sh and he shall rule over him and Cain talked with Abel his brother and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up and, and against Abel his brother and slew him why did he kill because of envy, envy and jealousy because of the relationship that he had with and God. the respect that God gave him but he could have had the same thing if he had done the same if thing if he had done the same thing listen he could have had the same listen thing. envy and jealousy will literally get you out of place Jesus. And will cause people to want to be with you. Yeah. In Galatians 3 and 1, and we've got countless stories, uh, even in the text that we've looked at, that of people who have gotten out of place because they listened to the wrong voice, mm -hmm. because they a person envied a, a certain thing. Listen, people are sending assassins. This is what happened with Samson and Delilah. Mm -hmm. the, they sent they, the people sent uh, the Philistines sent Delilah. They paid her. They, they, they gave her something to literally get into his ear. So they poisoned her and she poisoned her mind against Samson. Listen, you, you mean to tell me that, you, that you've been sleeping with the enemy? That, it, that the enemy has infiltrated the very person that sleeps with you to destroy you and to kill you? Absolutely, yes. yes. 
People, listen, the enemy is not playing fair. He's trying to get, he's getting into people's ears and he's destroying you. That our pillow talk, our entire uh, premise behind pillow talk was not just to make sure that, you know, that, that marriages were strong. It was to try to destroy the voice of the enemy that's used to destroy marriages and relationships. Right. And so you look at this situation with Judas. Judas was listening to the voice of greed. Mm -hmm. Come on. You can even, I was talking about it yesterday. You can even be bewitched by your own voice. There can be a voice that rises up inside of you. Look at Cain and Abel. There was a voice of jealousy that rose up in him. The voice of envy rose up in him. Right. Nobody had to tell him to kill his brother. His envy was what rose Jesus. up in him to want to kill his brother. Because he Jesus. envied the relationship that he had with God. Mm. So the whole root, of the, the root of Biscano, the root of bewitchment is envy and jealousy and covetousness. People, listen, there are people that have actually infiltrated. Because, yeah, They've right. infiltrated your, your government organization. They've infiltrated your, 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 your church. They've infiltrated your ministry. They've infiltrated your family. Mm -hmm. And they're just waiting for the right time to strike. Yes. Come on. Yes. This is what happened with David and Absalom. Yes. The, the Bible said that it, David said it was my own familiar friend. You remember Ahotophel was Bathsheba's, uh, was Bathsheba's uh, grandfather. And so as a result... He was, he was, there was still some woundedness and hurt that was there from what happened with Bathsheba and Uriah. And so as a result, he didn't like the way things happened. Absalom was in the position he was in because he was, he was already hurt by the fact that his father didn't do some things the way that he, the way that he wanted him to. Yes. So you gotta, you gotta look at that. You even got to look in your own life and say, where am I susceptible for the enemy to use me to cause bewitchment in the life of somebody else? Oh where do I have uh, in proclivities and injuries and wounds and offense that I haven't dealt with? Right. Come on. Right. That's on my questionnaire now for church, people to come to our church. Listen, with, with, with the, the last church you were at, how were you wounded? How did the last per uh, uh, pastor offend you? How did the last pastor hurt you? I've, li I've never discussed this on an open forum. But one of the things that I do is I watch and I listen. And I tell many of my pastor friends, I said, if somebody comes to your organization or your church and they've got everything negative to say about the last church they were in or the last pastor, baby, let me tell you something. It's only a matter of time in my, listen, I can count on paper and I can show you statistics of people that if they come, and sometimes as pastors, we're just so happy to get new people and we're so happy that new people are joining our churches, but we don't do the we don't do the research to see. This is why uh, it, 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 you know countries have immigration processes. That you gotta any country we go to, we have to go through customs and immigration to be able to see what our passport is yes. and see what country we came from why and see whether we're in good standing with them yes. to know why they're there. And we need to do the things the same thing spiritually. We need to be able to check people out. Why are you here? What's your purpose? Who sent you here? Because whenever God wants to bless, God will send people. Mm -hmm. And whenever the enemy wants to, wants to curse you, he'll send people too. Yes. Yeah. So it's very important. It's very important for us to look at this. It's very important for us to see who the people are that are coming into our lives. Not just our churches, but into our individual lives. Listen, who are the people that are sent to you? Who are the people that are coming to talk? Why does that person want to be such a good friend to you? Why do they want to tell you everybody else's business? Why is it that they're always whispering with you? Well, let me call you. And, and you know they've never called you before. Right. You know they don't really call you. As a matter of fact, they didn't even like you when y'all were, were sitting right beside each other. They didn't even talk to you. But now all of a sudden they want to call you and they they want to talk to you. They want to be with you. Yes. Yes. And the amazing yes. thing is once they get you out of the garden, once they get you out of your place of purpose, once they get you out of your place of destiny, guess what happens? They're gone. They're gone. Go ahead. I want to find, I'm going to find this thing real quick. I want to this share with them because I think, I think this is, this is going to, this is going to bless somebody. Uh, I'm going to find this, this story. Um, Right, because you know, even with that bewitching spirit, it it really, of course, it seeks to uh, release harm, um, and how how it can um, how it can destroy you, destroy relationships, um, get you into a place where you're you're alone, you're isolated. Um, if it can divide you, it certainly can destroy you. 
And so we've got to we've got to really maintain our life support system. We've got to maintain our relationship. We've got to, you know, maintain the accountability. And whenever we get to a place where we're no longer accountable, then we are certainly susceptible um, to being destroyed. We're susceptible to the enemy wreaking havoc in our life. And many times what happens is because, you know, there are people I'm sure I'm here and say, wow, that would never happen to me. But unforgiveness will cause a root of envy and bitterness to take place in your life. And if we don't deal with unforgiveness, if we don't really deal with those issues, those wounds, and that's one of the things even tonight, I'm gonna first start talking about um, in this mentorship program because we don't realize the things that we've gone through and suffered through in past, in past times affect us now and it will continue to affect us and if we don't deal with the wounds if we don't acknowledge them recognize this is what it is because a wound um, it will always begin to manifest in various ways sometimes it's through anger sometimes anxiety sometimes um, it is self-sabotage sometimes it is it, it is a number of different things that would take place in your life that you begin to exhibit these emotions and and you and and let me tell you something. The people that have uh, allowed themselves to bewitch other people, I don't believe that all of them was truly bad. They were truly mm -hmm. no. evil. I really believe that these people had a good heart. They really at one time loved God, but they allowed bitterness through unforgiveness to take root in their life, and they couldn't get past it. That's it. They couldn't get past That's it. That's it. And, and they're wounded and they're hurt. They're wounded. Yeah, and the real essence of the thing, of course, is the enemy. The enemy. Who wants to get you out of place. Absolutely. Listen, I want to, I want to, I was looking at a couple of scriptures, you know, and, and they, right, they say. The, right, oh, because the devil didn't leave heaven by itself. Right. No, no, no. He <laughs> talked a third of the angels. Yes. This is, this shows you how seducing this spirit can be. Mm -hmm. This spirit of bewitchment is so seducing because it makes it seem as if though it's right. Right. It may, listen, if, uh, if, the, if Lucifer could, could talk a third of the angels out of heaven. Then, then listen, we're, we're no match. They know what it's like to be in the very presence of God 24 hours a day, seven days a week for years. Right. And he talks them out of the very place Come of on. being in the presence of God. Talks them out. Talks and that's what that voice of bewitchment does. Yes. It that's why Paul asked, he said, who has bewitched you mm -hmm. that you didn't follow the truth? Mm -hmm. Who has bewitched you? Yes. And so, I, you know, I, I mean, it's just, it's amazing. I, this story, and I, Lord, I, you know, the, the, there's another piece, and I, I'm, I'm a very, um, you know, when, when, when I did my undergrad, I was, it was a really a research-based um, school, and so, you know, my heart is always to make sure that I don't give out information that I haven't researched and know the, the essence of it, but I like this story, and so I'm going to tell it, and uh, they say it's an urban, urban legend, but they said there was a woman who had a pet snake, and uh, she loved it, and uh, it was four meters long and looked healthy, however, one day it stopped eating. And the desperate woman tried everything she could and offered anything that the snake would like. Still, the snake seemed to ignore, uh, seemed ignorant and refused to eat. Finally, the woman took her loving pet to the vet as a last resort. The vet listened to the story carefully and then asked the woman whether the snake sleeps with her at night, wraps around her, and whether it tends to spread out through its length. Being happy to hear that the woman gave a positive reply, she further explained that it looks like the snake asked for something, but she is unable to help and make it feel better. Then the vet said something shocking. Namely, the python wasn't sick, but it had been preparing to eat her instead. Now, there is a story that the, 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 the person said that that's not true, that potentially that, that that snake could not just necessarily eat the woman. But I do believe that we have been in a place where we've been petting uh, snakes and we've been petting things that wanted to bite us and petting people yes. and places and things and playing with stuff that we didn't realize was really trying to kill us. Mm -hmm. It was just trying to get close enough to us to the people to destroy us. Right. And so you've got to assess those voices that you're listening to. You've got to assess relationships that you have with people who are trying to take you out of key relationships. And you listen, let me tell you something. And, and again, all of us can be used to do it. Right. I can look back in my life and I can see where the enemy used me as a source of bewitchment. I right. can look at that. Yes. I can look yes. at that. There was a, there was a time uh, somebody came to me and they called me and they said, well, what do you think about this situation? And I just offered my, my opinion about it when the reality was I should have kept my mouth shut. I, even, even if I knew something, I shouldn't have said anything about it because guess what? It wasn't my business. Right. And so there are times when we, when we call people and people call us to answer things and say things. And guess what? And it could even be a case or a cause that, that we have an issue with. People, you know, a lot of people now talking about this whole church hurt thing. 
And so, you know, well, you know, this, this, and so sometimes you see people that have been hurt by other people. And as a result, they hate leadership mm -hmm. or they really, they have a, 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 they have a disrespect and a dishonor for leadership. Right. But you know why? Because somewhere they were hurt and somewhere they didn't get the response that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. Hence the whole formula that you have for Absalom. Hence the whole formula that you have for Jezebel's spirit. It, is in, it enters in because, it, and then you're in a position where you're in a close relationship and for whatever reason they target you. Mm -hmm. And you don't even question it. Mm -hmm. You don't even question why they came to give you this information. Right. You don't even question why it is that they came to talk to you and tell you that. Right. You didn't even question why they had an assassination attempt. Yes. Why didn't these people question the people that came to them that literally came from Antioch and Iconium to, to, to Lystra and Derby to tell them about Paul and Barnabas? Why didn't they tell them? They didn't even, not only did they question the people, listen, man, when you walk, you mean to tell me you walk 40 miles? You mean to tell me you walked 40 miles or you hopped on a donkey 40 miles to come tell me this? Because they didn't have cell phones in those days. Right. They didn't have text me. They didn't have messenger. They didn't have Facebook. They, they didn't have that. You mean to tell me you walked 40 miles to tell me that because you were so mad at these folks? And people would go out of their way yes. to follow people yes. to try to assassinate them and kill them. Yes. Yes. This is what this is all about. Mm -hmm. This is what this spirit of bewitchment is all about. So at any rate, I'm, I'm excited. We're, we're, we're closing this thing up. Uh, you can go to the website. And what I said was, I, I didn't want to, I'm not, we're not here to necessarily just sell uh, products all the time. What we did was we said that you could go to the website and you could make a donation for it on where the book is. Uh, and then we'll be, you'll be able to, uh, to get it. It should be available maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, but I'm really excited because I believe there are a lot of people. And it'll be a, it'll be a smaller book. It won't be 500 pages. Uh, but uh, <laughs> it won't be 500. But, uh, but at any rate, I think it's very important that we understand how this spirit operates and how it tries to destroy us. Amen? Yes. How it tries to bring questionable uh, and break up relationships, poison friendships. Again, I was talking to uh, one of the apostles and he said, man, I looked at how we, a lot of leaders used to fellowship and work together. And now there's so much suspicion and so much other stuff sometimes in some of these relationships mm -hmm. that people aren't doing it because people saw the relationship and saw the potential that it had right. and sought to poison it and destroy it. Again, right. my wife shared earlier, for those of you that just came on, mm -hmm. that the enemy wants to make sure that, that, that through poison and through venom that he attacks your mind, he attacks your heart, he attacks your respiratory system system he attacks your blood and he attacks your mobility and your sight and your sight mm -hmm. so those things are being attacked mm -hmm. you got to wonder why is the enemy trying to attack you and bewitch you absolutely amen listen we've been <laughs> on here long enough at least an hour uh but i really believe that we wanted to see people blessed uh and helped um no it's not a, a couple of people i know have asked if it's too late to join the mentorship it is not you can go to our website and sign up for that and so i really believe even this first night is really going to put you in a place of of healing of of understanding and identifying those wounds in your life that will cause you to be susceptible um to the enemy's bewitchment and then certainly um be able to prevent you from being the one that the enemy uses to bewitch someone else That's so good. you can certainly we certainly go to our website and sign up for that and um, you're you'll receive a link um, for tonight it starts at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and so you it'll certainly be available for that um, as well so yes. proud of you yes. and what God's gonna awesome. do through you so anyway right because you know I think with that one of the things that God was telling me earlier this so year said if they missed the live can they replay yes yes it, it is um, you can certainly get the replay if you happen to miss some I know some people work but if you have to um, happen to miss some of the actual live recording it is um, available for replay and because it is a mentorship then I will be available to do, um, you know, to talk you through certain things. If you have questions, you can certainly um, be a part of that um, as well to contact me. So yes, well, uh, and it, it, yes, it is online. It is online. It is online. It's accessible. Um, we have a very, very good platform, um, and so you'll be able to interact with me, be able to ask questions, and um, it's going to be amazing. Yes, so you can certainly wow. sign up for that. Yep. So, uh, and also again, our book just came out last week. Um, sudden breakthrough. It's doing really, really good. Decrees, prayers, confession, accession, suddenly moment. And again, I'm really excited about it. Please go to Barnes and Nobles, 
or Amazon.com, Books a Million, um, yep, all of those, or our website if you want a signed copy of it, and we'd love for you to be able to do this, LeJohnandValore.com. You can also go to our website, and you'll see where you can pre-order the book, uh, the, the, the book Bewitched. I think it's going to be tremendous. Uh, I think it's just a tremendous resource because I think that so many people are uh, or have been bewitched, and you can see the sign, the, 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 um, the graphic behind us. You know, I really like it uh, because I really want to see people free. And uh, yesterday was Halloween, and so we felt that no better time to really launch that than that time because we want to see people free, man. People have been bewitched in so many areas of their lives, and it's broken up so many great relationships, so much potential, so much destiny, so much, so many things have been immobilized, so much vision has been destroyed because of right. bewitchment, so much, uh, so many, so many heartbeats have been destroyed, so many bloodlines have been destroyed. My God, I mean, we look at it in the natural, but when venom is released, it really destroys a lot. And so uh, yes. I really want to, we really want to see people really, really. Uh, really, really free from this demonic system and cycle and demonic confederacy. We're going to have tomorrow Apostle Jojo Dawson, uh, and we'll have a couple other friends that are beyond that are going to talk about this. I saw another one of my friends that came up, and I might even call him and ask him if he's available to come on with us on Facebook Live to really discuss this issue and deal with it because I think that people need to be impacted uh, by this thing. Amen? Yes. Amen. Well, listen, we love you guys. Thank you so much, every, each and every one of you. This is starting a new month. And uh, we really believe that this month, these last two months are going to be tremendous. Uh, thank you for those uh, that, that follow us. Thank you for those that sow into us. Thank you for those that partner with us. And, uh, and we just want you to know we love you. We bless you. We thank God for you. And we're excited for your new season. Our declaration and our prayer is that every, every bewitching spirit that yes. has come against you and every assignment of yes. hell uh, that has come against you uh, is broken now by the power of the blood of Jesus yes. Christ. The blood of Jesus can literally destroy any demonic activity and demonic assignment. And we charge the angels to begin to move and guard and protect. And thank you for the Holy Spirit, which is moving and guarding and protecting and illuminating your mind. And that the enemy would give you such strong discernment, the spirit of discernment come upon you, that you would have such strong discernment and such wisdom that you would be able to divide between that which is God and that which is not God, that which is sent of God and that which is not sent of God, yes. the lie of the enemy and the truth of God, that you would be able to discern and differentiate between that that quickly, 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 because you do not have time yes. to allow the enemy yes. to bewitch you, even to stop you from relationships and friendships and other people that you should be connected to. There are people who, have, who hold your destiny, as Paul and Silas did for those churches, and people were pulled and snatched out of those relationships, listen, because of the fact that the enemy would want to bewitch them. And Paul writes that he thinks it's so strong that he wants to, he writes an entire letter to them in 3 and 1, in Galatians 3 and 1, and he literally takes a couple of chapters and even in five he says stand fast in the liberty wherewith you were made free listen and be so from again. and be not entangled again yes. and so he says listen after you've gotten your deliverance don't go back to the thing that bewitches you and has you listen and listen to the bewitching amen Jesus so anyway we love you we bless you we thank God for you uh, assess those voices look at it listen to it yes. and uh, and think about exactly who the enemy has sent to bewitch you and to try to get you out of your place of destiny. Mm -hmm. And when you find out, shut it down. Shut it down. And then if, the, if people call you and say, hey, well, what do you think about this? Sometimes baiting, people are baiting you into being yes. bewitchers. Yes. And so you can't let people bait you into being bewitchers either. Yes. Come on, because they have a, a, an assignment to cause harm mm -hmm. and, 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 and further immobilement to the body of Christ. Yeah, Portia, I like that. Poison the potential. That's it. <laughs> That's what the enemy wants to do. That's it. Absolutely. Well, listen, we love you. Portia, with your permission, uh, 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 Prophetess, uh, we're going to use that, uh, and we're going to throw that in there for, as one of the comments, and I'll give you credit for it. Amen. Uh, yep. Yep. Shut it down. That's right. Shut it down. <laughs> Amen. Well, listen, we love you, and we will talk to you soon. Mm -hmm. Blessings and prayer and, and uh, glory. Be unto the Lord on your behalf. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We'll see you guys um, tomorrow. Uh, Apostle um, uh, Jojo Dawson. Monday, Apostle Alexander Pagani. Tuesday, Sophia Ruffin. Wednesday, uh, Apostle Ivory Hopkins. Thursday, uh, Apostle uh, Andrew Town. And we got a couple more that are coming. I'm excited. Yes. Listen, love you guys. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Amen. Bye -bye. For those that are part of the mentorship, we'll be back here tonight at 7 o'clock. If you want to sign up, go ahead and go to our website. Love you guys. Bye-bye.